Good evening, everyone. I'm Frank Novak, and welcome to this Senate candidate edition of Point of Reference. Tonight, a brief glimpse of the seven candidates running for office, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. We're talking with attorney Kathleen O'Connor Ives, who's a Newburyport City Councilor, also an attorney, and also is an online retailer. Welcome to the program, Kathleen. Thank you for having me, Frank. Okay, getting right to it and being able to vie for this particular Senate seat, you want to keep businesses here. Mm -hmm. How would you do that? Mm -hmm. How would you make health insurance more affordable for mm -hmm. them? In our district, we have a lot of border communities, so we feel that pressure from New Hampshire. And you know, we try to figure how can we be attractive so that people can live and work here and we can attract jobs and businesses to come here. I believe that instead of us lowering standards per se and, and using the same formula that New Hampshire might use, we have a completely different tax structure. They have very high property taxes, they have a higher meals tax. It's not the same in terms of that structure. So what I believe in is that if we invest in our local communities and we direct revenues toward infrastructure so that we can attract people to live and work here, that's the way to go. Because what people are all looking for are safe places to live and work and easy commutes and quality water treatment, sewer treatment, uh, lighting, good bridges and highways. These are the things that make quality communities and that requires revenue. And in terms of who pays that revenue, that's where the devil's in the details. So I think that we need tax reform so that the burden isn't focused on working families and seniors on fixed incomes. They're stretched to the limits. I think the entities that can afford to pay, like corporations that get a lot of tax breaks right now and are mm -hmm. unaccountable has a massive potential to generate local revenue. You wanted to eliminate tax breaks for corporations that don't show significant job creation. Can you cite an example of that? I sure can. One um, example that's happening right now is in the, the film industry. So Massachusetts offers a tax credit for the film industry and the thought behind that was it would attract jobs and stimulate the economy. But the reality is, is that even though Massachusetts did that and gave tax credits, we spent uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, about $200 million, with this idea of having a tax credit. And the reality was it only generated about $17 million in revenues. So the state took a hit of about $82 million. And you can only imagine how that money could have been used for our local communities. In education, you want to increase the state budget for education. Does that mean an increase in taxes? I think that we don't have enough revenue for public education. That means it needs to be generated somewhere. And I know that everyone across the Commonwealth wants to close their ears in terms of the idea of taxes. I think we need to restructure the system because it's currently not working. I'm not afraid to look at the system that we have and say, you know what? In terms of property taxes being the basis for which we fund our local schools, it's not working. This Chapter 70 funding is too complicated, and we need to fix it so that every single year our towns aren't scrambling for millions of dollars to meet our education standards and our deteriorating buildings. Right now, it's just kicking the can down the road and hoping for a solution. I know that families see that they don't have foreign language, they don't have arts, they don't have funding for sports. It's not working with the current system we have to generate revenue. So do we need more? Yes. But I'm focused on having those entities that can afford to pay for it chip in. And that hasn't happened for over 20 years. We what, haven't had that system. What entities would they be, by example? For example, um, I believe that um, the, the corporate tax breaks that I referred to, if you imagine mm -hmm. that one instance with just that one example of the film industry, and that's mm -hmm. kind of niche. Yeah what we could do, we could actually have billions of dollars in revenue. Right now, corporate tax credits aren't being monitored to see if they actually result in job creation. And I believe that we can have hundreds of millions of dollars funneled into public education in our local cities and towns to be able to do the programming and have the standards that Massachusetts residents deserve. I think that residents are comfortable with paying taxes when they know there's no waste and they know that the government is accountable. That's what they want to see. They want to know that when they hand money off that they need for their other needs and their own cost of living, that it's being properly spent for the things that government does and for the things and the resources that they use. Of the seven people that are running for this first Essex Senate seat, three of the people are attorneys. You are, are also an attorney. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked the other two. Mm -hmm. And that is under the health care system now, statistically, one in four tests that doctors order 
are not necessary, driving the cost of health care up. But they do it as a defensive mechanism so as not to be sued. Mm. You're an attorney. Mm -hmm. Would you push for some sort of tort reform? And if so, how would you get that passed in a legislature dominated by attorneys? Mm -hmm. With that specific question and the problem that you're talking about, about testing for things that might not necessarily be an issue, mm -hmm. I think that the legislation that they most recently passed up on Beacon Hill is going to help address that problem. We have a payment system with our health care system that is pay by service, pay by each test that's done. Mm -hmm. And that's conducive to having a necessary test done. I think that's the problem. This is, to me, an you example. You don't think it has to do with defensive medicine because the doctors are afraid of being sued. We're talking here not so much about a health care issue, mm -hmm. but a legal issue. Right. I don't think that's the main problem. I okay. think that's an example of an issue where you have a solution for a problem that doesn't match. I think that the okay. problem is very real. But in terms of that being the real reason, mm -hmm. the real reason is because doctors aren't in a position to be coordinated for health care so that you have duplication of efforts. And I know we all experience it as patients. We feel uncoordinated. We feel confused about being advocates for our own health. And there needs to be a streamlined system so that we're not having costs increase because additional tests are being done. Is that an aspect of it? I believe every single system, whether it's EBT cards or it's the banking system or the healthcare system, public transportation, we need reforms. You know, absolutely, in every system there can be, you know, people that don't do the right thing or people that take advantage. But I don't want to be distracted with a social wedge issue when really we have the foundation of the issue being the structure of how doctors are paid for their health care. In the three strikes and you're out circumstance mm -hmm. that we're talking about here, do you think that that's an arbitrary type of uh, enforcement? I do. I said um, most recently um, to the Eagle Tribune that to me, three strikes and you're out is slightly random. It's been done in other states, so we can look at models in terms of how expensive it is for taxpayers. Now, the problem of dangerous criminals being released on parole is about real. Less than 30 seconds, go ahead. It's a very real thing, but what we need to do is not have a political solution to it. We need to get the district attorneys and judges at the table and find out how to actually solve this problem so we don't have dangerous criminals on the streets. Thank you very much. Attorney Kathleen O'Connor Ives, we wish you the best of luck in the upcoming primary election, and we thank you for being here. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. We'll be right back with more. I hope that you've listened and learned in an effort to help you decide which candidate to support in the upcoming election. And on Election Day, remember to vote, because if you don't vote, you don't count, and everyone should count. And as always, we hope that this program has been a point of reference for you. And until next time, my name is Frank Novak, and thanks very much for watching.